Vincent Steamin Hunter is insanely strong right now. Blizzard has leaned really hard into the Sigil playstyle and made them into absolute monsters. Havoc is also really strong right now, although they haven't had to completely reinvent themselves to remain consistently powerful. Blizzard just unveiled the Aldrachi Reaver Demon Hunter Hero Talent Tree, and it doesn't really interact with any of the things that are making Vengeance or Havoc super strong at the moment. Hi, it's Laryl, and I'm going to go through the Aldrachi Reaver tree, but first, please like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Okay, let's dive into this tree. We'll start with the top talent here, Art of the Glaive. Consuming three soul fragments as Havoc or 20 as Vengeance allows you to cast Reaver's Glaive. Reaver's Glaive replaces Throw Glaive, and it basically just throws a Super Glaive. It's a glaive enhanced with the essence of consumed souls. Sure, it deals physical damage and it ricochets to two extra targets for extra damage. It begins a well-practiced pattern of Glaive work, enhancing your next Chaos Strike and Blade Dance as Havoc or Fracture Shear and Soul Cleave as Vengeance. Chaos Strike, Shear, and Fracture apply Reaver's Mark, which causes the target to take 15% increased damage for 5 seconds. Now presumably that's 15% increased damage from you, not from all sources, although it doesn't say that. And Blade Dance and Soul Cleave deal 3 additional Glaive Slashes to nearby targets for additional damage. Now when I first read this, I misread it I guess, and I thought it said 3 additional Soul Cleaves, 3 additional Blade Dances, and that seemed absolutely insane. For Vengeance, I was really really into this tree. But now that I've given it some more time to just kinda go over that, 3 additional Glaive Slashes basically just sounds like enhanced auto attacks, maybe hits from the Reaver's Glaive. So. Some extra damage, some extra proc damage, but that's pretty much it. Just some extra damage in AoE, a single target damage increase buff or debuff from Chaos Strike, and then either Shear or Fracture, depending on whether you're running Fracture or not, which is unfortunately a possibility. Kind of just some extra damage, not really all that complicated. It does do one thing that I like and that we haven't really seen from a lot of these talent trees. It replaces an existing skill as a proc, but still an existing skill just gets some more power grafted onto it. And they've used Throw Glaive, which really isn't all that great of a skill normally, uh, certainly not for Vengeance, and I never really loved the Throw Glaive play style for Havoc. I thought it was a fun novelty, but not something I actually like wanted to play long term. So I have to say, honestly, this talent tree not getting off to a start that I'm all that thrilled with. Now we'll move on to Keen Engagement, Reaver's Glaive grants 20 Fury, or Preemptive Strike, Throw Glaive deals AoE damage around the initial hit. For me, this is pretty self-evident, like Keen Engagement giving resource, that seems way more valuable. Now if Preemptive Strike deals just an overpowered amount of damage, okay fine, but otherwise it seems pretty uninteresting. Evasive Action makes Vengeful Retreat castable a second time within three seconds. This is going to be like visually very enjoyable, being able to double tap Vengeful Retreat and backflip 40 yards. That sounds hilarious. In terms of actual like value in Mythic Plus and in Raid, I could see some. Maybe you have to move out of a mechanic, so you Vengeful Retreat away and then Vengeful Retreat right back into melee range. Maybe that's an option, but I think Unhindered Assault makes more sense Vengeful Retreating away to drop some sort of awful mechanic and then hitting Fellblade to not only get back into melee range with the thing that you're fighting, you know, kind of would rather use Fellblade to get back into range and do damage to generate resources than like backflip back into melee range. But, you know, also there's some more talent synergy with Fellblade that you're not really getting out of Vengeful Retreat. Incisive Blade makes it so that when enhanced, Chaos Strike and Soul Cleave deal 30% increased damage. Now this is a little interesting to me. Chaos Strike is normally a single target skill. I know it can cleave, but it's sort of the single target skill. So you would kind of think it would be paired with like Fracture or that Soul Cleave, which is an AoE, would be paired with Blade Dance. So it's kind of weird to put those two together. But in any case, they'll do 30% increased damage when they're being affected by that Reaver's Glaive, Art of the Glaive buff. Aldrashi Tactics makes it so that the second enhanced ability in a pattern shatters an additional soul fragment, so you get one extra soul fragment uh, from, from doing this Reaver's Glaive combo. Okay. Army Unto Oneself makes it so that Fellblade surrounds you with a Blade Ward, giving you 10% physical damage reduction for 5 seconds. This is actually pretty useful, and it does make Vengeful Retreating to be able to recast Fellblade for that damage reduction buff. A potential minor defensive cooldown, but also like a resource generator, and kind of useful. 
Incorruptible Spirit, I think, is definitely better, though, uh, especially for Vengeance with the amount of Soul Fragments that you're going to be eating. It makes it so that consuming Soul Fragments gives you an extra 15% healing over time. No idea what the time is, but it doesn't really matter. If you're eating... I mean, as Vengeance, you're basically eating uh, about 60-something, 60 65 to 70 Soul Fragments a minute. So more than one a second. And I mean that the amount of healing that you get from soul fragments, it's the majority of your self healing. It's one of your major defensive components. So being able to boost that by another 15%, I think is probably more valuable than an occasional 10% damage reduction. But both of these defensive bonuses are honestly pretty good. Wounded Quarry makes it so that while Reaver's Mark is on your target, Melee attacks have a chance to strike with an additional Glaive Slash for damage and shatter a soul. So you're going to get some extra souls out of all of your melee attacks during the period where you have that Reaver's Glaive effect going. Great. So I guess about five seconds from that Reaver's Mark there. So not super high uptime on that Reaver's Mark. You know, five seconds, about every 20 to 25 seconds is how often you're going to be triggering that Reaver's Glaive effect. And then you have to actually cast either Chaos Strike or Fracture to be able to then apply it. So there's still a little bit of a disconnect, a little bit of a delay because you first have to consume the souls, then you have to use Throw Glaive, then you have to cast Chaos Strike or Fracture. So there's like several steps in doing this combo. Real master of the blade stuff. Intent Pursuit is a tongue twister, but also it makes it so that casting an enhanced ability reduces the remaining cooldown of the hunt by two seconds. Now, if you're triggering this every 20 seconds and you're getting two uh, different empowered spells you're getting like empowered chaos striker fracture and then blade dancer soul cleave roughly every 20 seconds that's basically 20 percent cooldown reduction on the hunt now the hunt is a 90 second base cooldown so that's like 18 seconds shaved off the top so about 72 seconds on what is a pretty powerful single target damage cooldown also it gives you a lot of leech and I really like the hunt. It's a very cool looking skill, very fun skill to use. It's really nice to have some cooldown reduction on it. That's kind of been the one issue that I've had with it throughout all of the like post Shadowlands era. So Dragonflight, but all of the time that we've had it outside of having to be Night Fate to use it. It's uh, it's been kind of disappointing that there really isn't all that much interesting like talent synergy or cooldown reduction or just any kind of cool interactions with it. It's just press button, do damage, and that's good. But I would like thematically to have more. And so this giving you some amount of cooldown reduction is OK. Escalation makes it so that each successive enhanced ability deals 10% increased damage. Now, we don't know if that's like per combat engagement, like does that last between reverse throw glaives or does that just mean the first one does 10% more damage and then the second one does 20% more damage or maybe the first one does no increased damage and then the second one, does... you know, this is a bit weirdly phrased like if this lasts for all of a combat engagement and you're doing like a 15 minute fight and you've had however many procs deep into a fight you're like your fracture is doing 300 percent more damage I, I don't think that's realistically going to happen so that means basically you're going to get 10 percent more damage on one and 20 percent more damage on the other the bigger thing here is that the effect of the second enhancement is doubled so if you were to double the soul cleave that means you're going to get six additional Glaive Slashes to nearby targets. Now, depending on the damage that that deals and whether you're in like a large scale AOE or sort of a smaller scale AOE or even single target, this could wind up being better. But for at least for single target and probably for a lot of situations, being able to double the damage output, uh, the damage bonus that you're getting from Reaver's Mark, being able to do 30 percent more damage for the next five seconds to that target. That seems pretty hard to beat for any sort of situation where you're fighting a prio target or, you know, just not fighting a lot of guys at the same time. Warblade's Hunger makes it so that consuming a soul fragment causes your next Chaos Strike, Shear, or Fracture to deal bonus damage. Okay, so I mentioned Shear earlier, and unfortunately, this is why. There's been some conjecture, and we have no idea how much damage this deals, right? We don't know if this stacks either. Like, if this stacks infinitely, and it doesn't really scale all that high, then there's no need to shift off of using Fracture and playing Demon Hunter the way that you would now and into the sort of old school, horrible play style of unbind, you know, spec out a fracture, bind shear, 
Press shear from the time you pull the boss until the time the boss dies. That's the worst thing in the world to just like, you know, you put shear on two and then you just press two until the fight's over. But that is maybe, maybe a horrible thing that could occur. I don't think so. I think Blizzard knows that players hate that. And I mean, what game designer would want to intentionally make that? So I don't think that's actually going to happen. But obviously, there have been some people saying, you know, oh, God, no, nightmare, 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 please, no. I don't think it's real, though. Thrill of the Fight is the final talent in this tree. Here's what it does. After consuming both enhancement, gain Thrill of the Fight, increasing your attack speed by 15% for five seconds and causing your next ability to deal 30% increased damage and healing. So Demon Hunter doesn't really get a ton of value out of attack speed. I mean, it gets more auto attacks. Great, but five seconds of 15% attack speed is a pretty underwhelming bonus. Uh, a really underwhelming bonus, in fact. I guess there is some value in just simply like if you're empowering the Reaver's Mark, you're getting 30% more damage. You're also getting 15% more attack speed. I guess that's roughly like 45% more auto attack damage. It's not a lot of your damage, but it's a little bit. A couple percent more damage over the course of a fight, maybe if you're doing that every time. Now, obviously, this is pretty good for Havoc due to Demon Blades. It's unfortunate that Vengeance doesn't have some equivalent to Demon Blades. So, like, I guess this is it's still so short, though, and it's really not that much attack speed. So I don't really think it adds all that much value even for Havoc, but it adds like some amount, some amount more fury, some amount more damage that is like meaningful beyond just auto attacks. Right. But for Vengeance, this is just, you know, auto attack damage. Yeah, not great. The fact that you're getting 30% increased damage and healing with your next ability, especially if you are empowering that Reaver's Mark and then you are using a really high damage skill, like a like a major cooldown, like the Hunt or Elysian Decree, especially if you have stacked up a bunch of frailty stacks, you're playing Vengeance, you've stacked frailty a whole bunch and then you hit the target with that Fracture as the final hit in the combo. It's taking 30% more damage, then your next skill is gonna do 30% more damage and you, you hit them with an Elysian Decree or the Hunt, then I think this could actually wind up being a really, really powerful skill because it's basically giving you just a, like a 30% damage amp along with all of the other damage amps that you get by playing Vengeance on a relatively short cooldown. You know, we're talking 20 to 30 seconds, depending on the situation in, in which you're fighting. That could be pretty good. With that being said, this tree is pretty, pretty simple, pretty passive, not really all that interesting. And I think worst of all, it really isn't doing anything to lean into any of the sigil play style, any of the spellcaster stuff, any of the utility that has made Vengeance so incredibly strong as we've gone into the back half of Dragonflight. Now, I would expect that that's probably all hidden in the Fell Scarred tree. Kind of does fit the name better for it to be all about spell damage and caster stuff. But with that being said, I think this could numerically be good in like raids or in Mythic Plus for that matter. But thematically, it's not really doing all that much for me. It's it's kind of underwhelming. It just seems pretty simple. It's like free damage procs. And then also you have this empowered throw glaive thing. I don't know. Not the hugest fan. At least not of what we've seen so far, but, you know, I'd be happy to be proven wrong by playing it and finding out that actually it rocks. Alright, I think that covers it. Please be sure to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Bye.